at the Sinedrin trial, therefore before the court of priests gathered with all of the high priests, including Caiaphas, was this a fair and legal trial, according to the law of Moses, which had been organized. Looking at the issues, it had the outward appearance of legitimacy. It fr it's frequently like that under the rule of law when there are rules, and this was the case for the Jewish people, they have had their own rules for a long time. We organized something that looks like a fair trial. But even if the men who were judging in this trial had been corrupted, have however arrived upon a conviction, then it had been purely a formality. Currently in the West, where the rules of law is very present, we see the same kind of behavior happening. Everything appears legal. We are very fussy about the form. Besides, there are lawyers who are there and there. If there is either a formal error, trials may well be skipped. Sometimes everything is absolutely immoral. It all depends upon the honesty of the man who judge. Only when everything had been immoral, this could be seen easily. And in the case of Jesus, these were the points of illegality. First of all, it was an overnight trial. A trial normally may be organized publicly. Whoever the leaders of the Jews could not do this, the people would riot, as the crowds were very divided concerning Jesus. Secondly, they pay witnesses. False witnesses are obtained to tell half-truths. If it is true that Jesus said, destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. But if asked what he meant by that, he will explain that he is talking about his body. So the person's words were taken literally. Their allegorical meaning were not even envisaged. With this method, said Beria, who was the damned soul of Stalin, you gave me the mail of any condemned man, and I have him sentenced to death, because we could interpret words in any way it pleased him. Thirdly, Jesus may answer, but it had been in appearance only. As soon as he answers with precision, he gets an intimidating slap in the face by a guard of the high priest. This had been intimidating and also threatening. The right of lawyers had not been respected. Who defended him? If there had been a defense, it seemed to be a Pharisee who took up this defense. He was immediately evacuated and had been forbidden to speak. The false testimony had been so ridiculous that it had been obviously ignored and therefore one seeks to condemn him. Finally, Jesus was asked, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the living God? And Jesus answered, Yes, I am. The ice priest tore his clothes. That had been enough to condemn Jesus. How could that enough to condemn him? And if he has said that he is the Messiah, it will be necessary to verify this to prove that he is not the Messiah. Where were the jury deliberations? There were none. It, it had, had been, therefore, in truth, a, a, a masquerade trial and very much an unfair trial. What We could see a similar approach at the time of Joanne of Arc. This Inquisition trial had been quite well done. It had been planned. There might even have been an appeal from Joan of Arc to the Holy See, but obviously, if she could never appeal to the Holy See, she would have been saved. So, above all, you have to prevent her from making this call. So, by threatening, intimidating, poisoning her with spoiled food, she is forced to sign her paper stating that she renounced her call to the Vatican and submits herself to her judge. So the Inquisition process appears completely legal to a clerk who is still trying to falsify. Bishop Cochon had Jean to see him to entice him register things that she never said. He refused to, but 
in order to have her condemned, of course, Joanne had been put into the judge's snare who wanted her death, and she replied, Bishops, it is enough for you that I will die. The external appearance had been saved for about 20 years, only when later another tribunal met and demonstrated the masquerade and the horrible mechanism that had been employed. 